friends. So I was driving home last night from work. I just felt so exhausted. I was empty. I was drained. I just felt like I was, um, um, I'm sure all of you had something similar when you're just, there's nothing to give anymore. And I remember um, as I was driving, um, it came to my mind that there's a Jewish secret that God has wrote in his Bible, and I wanted to try it and see if it works. Um, five minutes later, I was crying, I was singing, and praising God. He reminded me that by doing this, I get filled, I get refreshed, and I get joy. It was very amazing, and as I contemplated about it, I just, I was amazed and I wanted to share with you. Um, I wanted to make another video today, but when this all came to be, I realized that God wants this one instead. Possibly someone needs it to hear, to hear this message, and hopefully it will be helpful to some. This is what I want to share with you today, a simple truth that will give you a spiritual wings to fly. This helps to overcome any hardship, any problem, anything in your life that is hindering your and hindering you down. Um, most Christians know this simple truth, but most Christians forget to use it or just don't realize the power it has. So um, the same day, I listened to a great sermon about the tr this truth, and it made me realize and see the whole picture more clear. So what could it be? What is it? I'm sure a lot of you have guessed already. But let me tell you a story about a pastor in Ukraine in the city of Mariupol. And... I will try to share his sermon later. It's a very long sermon, but I found it very interesting how he, his experience in Ukraine and what he had to go through. I will try to translate it, uh, translate it into English from Ukrainian, but today I want to share a little portion of it, a little snippet, I guess, from his story, what I was I thought very helpful in my story to tell you in this lesson um, or in this message. So he says, as the war has started in his city, um, he was unable to leave the city. For some reason, his wife got sick and he couldn't leave the city when, when his friends were hoping that he would go with them. And... Um, so when he couldn't do it, he saw hell on earth. The way he described it, basic, the basic survivor, the, all those, um, that's something that we can't even imagine. He said that they had to live in the middle of winter without water, without electricity, without connection. You couldn't call anyone. Basically without civilization. And... And he said that it was humanity at its worst and humanity at its best. When they couldn't even um, cook inside their houses, they had to go outside and cook outside to make meals. They had to make fires from different sources of wood that they had to um, f find. And by doing this, all the neighbors got together. They all had... In, in the past, like you said hi or bye to your neighbors, you never really knew them. But he said when this happened, you actually get to get to know everyone. You even know their pets by names. So he said that was um, a very great um, humanity, how it shows that we all can bond when troubles, when troubles come. But he said they had to make fires outside their houses to cook food. And all the neighbors got together to help each other. They collected water where they could. There was a nearby stream. 
It was uh, people collected water from puddles, from the rain or snow, and and then they had to bur- bury people. Um, there was dead people every day. Every day they had to bury people. They had to be. It w- they had to dig holes anywhere where it was possible. They had to um, lay them to rest. And um, he said they had to. Um, at first, they digged holes and put one person in it. Then they had to do more than one, because there were so many dead people all o- all around them. Um, when they couldn't dig anymore, it was too dangerous to go outside. They were trying to burn them. Then they just moved the bodies from the road. Um, <clears throat> he said. It was so hard and so there was a constant fire from both sides and um, the city was the firing ground. It was war and going outside was very dangerous. Their people were dying every day and some people couldn't handle it. They got crazy in their minds. They ran out outside screaming, kill me, kill me, I don't want to live anymore. And they got shot. Some people were asking to commit suicide. They just couldn't handle it anymore. And they did not want to live like this. As this pastor saw all of this and the constant stress of war, the constant stress and lack of food and water, he said, you just couldn't pray. You couldn't, you were so empty inside and so cold inside. There was nothing to give or to say but a tiny voice inside said praise me praise God at first he thought how can I praise God when I see everything so terrible what is there to praise him for but God said praise me and he did he started praising God for little things first and the heavens opened and the power of God came and filled him. And even though the situation did not change, but his soul has changed. His soul got a glimpse of heaven, a glimpse um, of joyfulness. And he said, this is the secret. When things are hard, when things are just, you can't do it anymore. This is the secret. You need to praise God. so praising God through tears through hardships through pain and suffering praise him when he is worthy because he is worthy Um, and you will see amazing results you will just be amazed so I wanted to know why why does this have such amazing results um, so I did some research, and I, here is what I found. In Jewish, the word blessing means bracha, barak, which was very interesting meaning. It means to kneel before him. We are bending our knee to God. Figuratively, I guess. So it means when Jewish people or any Christian people, when they bless God for everything, um, for bread, for water, for work, for money, for even our breath. For every little thing, we bless God, we bless each other. It means we are not only giving them blessings, we, all, we actually are kneeling before God. This is showing us or showing God that we find Him as the, our only, only God. And he is worthy of our praise. And and the second portion of the word bracha, which is blessing, bracha, it comes from the word a stream, a spring of water, a a source of water, which means that God is our source of everything. We are connecting to the source of his energy, his joy, his shalom, his blessing will pour out on us. And so basically when we don't bless him, we miss out. 
we don't get that source we don't get that connection to him he is our source of everything but when we bless him it pours out into us his wisdom his goodness by blessing god we connect to his source to his power and a lot of um churches they sing this jewish song which is called baruch ata hashem which is blesses our lord so basically if you really want to have the power um the real secret of the jewish prayer you should learn this jewish song which starts by um, it starts shema israel adonai eloheinu adonai had baruch hashem kod malshuto loma vavet and um i don't really I remember all the words but i know that baruch ata hashem bless the lord oh my soul i think uh, we have something similar like that but knowing those jewish words uh which have power even more than our basic english it's i think it's a more bigger blessing but even if we sing in english or whichever language you choose to do so it's fine it's perfectly fine and the best part is singing it to bless god we have to sing it that's the secret so basically when you're driving when you're uh, praying you have to start singing um, hallelujah or blessed uh, bless the lord oh my soul just start praising him in song even if you have the worst voice no matter god loves your voice he loves the singing for some reason it just makes miracle happen so basically everything i said everything the secret of this is in one word sing it when you're doing it try singing it this is the praise this is the secret that you will have probably um, a lot of Christians know, but we do not use it sometimes. Okay, and here's a little bit more information about this beautiful word, blessing, bless. Um, so like we said, it is from the Hebrew word Barak, which means blessing, and in, it's very rich. It's very um, amazing. It comes from the noun Baraka. Um, and it happens about 300 times in the Old Testament. And every time it's just translated bless, bless. But um, every, in every verse that we, in the, we read in the Bible, it just gives more meaning when you understand the whole concept, what it means. So God likes to bless us. He wants us to bless him. And... Um, it's basically worshiping and praising him and uh, when people bless god they are offering him praise for who he is and what he has done to us and that's what he loves um the word barak is used this way about 80 times in the and it happens mostly in the book of psalms so i could imagine and um and the book of psalms are just a very good example how we should bless god and um david there's like so many be beautiful psalms that we can actually sing we can actually read out loud and if you learn to sing them there's i actually went online and there's many beautiful psalms being sung and um I guess my goal in life is to learn more of them so I can really, really bless God and have more blessings pour into my life. And um, I, I think the best psalm that describes this is Psalm 103, verse 1 to 5. It says about, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all thine iniquities, who heals all thy diseases, 
who redeems thy life from destruction, who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. So basically Psalm 103 is the essence of blessing God. Whenever life is hard, whenever things are just not going right, this is what we should do. We start blessing Him. If you can sing, sing it to God. And His life, His um, all of these things that we read about, it will all pour out on you. So I hope to hear from you if you did already, if you are already practicing it and you are getting lots of benefits from it, let me know in my in the comments. Um, if you feel like it's um, something new, uh, let me know as well. But hopefully it will be a, be a blessing to you. So um, I was gonna say, I can sing this song for you, um, bless the Lord, oh my soul, but maybe some other time. Some other day, I do not have all the words, but all of you can Google it. It's a beautiful, beautiful song, and if you can learn it for yourself, bless the Lord on my soul. Um, I'm sure God will bless you for it. So you bless you, God bless you all, and take care. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy 